The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he taught them. I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said of those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while the two of you are on the way to court. Or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel from Matthew chapter 5, Jesus goes up the mountain. He's the new Moses. In the first account, when Moses went up on Sinai, the law of God came down in the form of the two tablets etched on stone. But that was not sufficient to help the people keep the law. It was powerless to forgive sins. And so there was much failure in the Old Testament. Jesus now has come to bring a new covenant, and that covenant will be a change of heart. And that's the whole Sermon on the Mount. We have the beginning of it in today's Gospel. That's why Jesus says, You have heard that you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you, And then he goes right into the heart, not the externals. Keeping the externals are important, of course. In the Old Testament, Israel had a function. They were a prophetic witness so that their life was different from the pagans. If they kept the law, they would not go into idolatry, and that would be a sign. But it wasn't enough because what God really wants is a change of our interior motives, passions, and our desires our words and also keeping the law the external law so it's a both and but Jesus says if you are angry with a brother or sister you will be liable to judgment and if you insult a brother or sister you will be liable to the council and if you say you fool you'll be liable to the hell of fire now notice there's an escalation in the level of accountability so being angry You will be before the local court and render judgment against you. But if you insult a brother or sister, you'll be liable to the council. That's the Sanhedrin, a much more august, important body, more serious offense. And if you say you fool, you'll be liable to the hell of fire. So that's the final judgment. The point here is that Jesus wants us to quickly amend our lives and not allow sin to fester in our soul so that it grows out of control, and then we not only fail to keep the Sermon on the Mount, but we also break the commandments. So Jesus says, come to terms quickly with your accuser, while the two of you are on the way to court, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown in prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. That's a reference to purgatory. So even in purgatory, God desires the same thing, transformation of our heart. And if we don't do it now, then we have the opportunity to rectify that in purgatory so long as we haven't completely separated ourselves from God through mortal sin. The whole purpose of the sermon, though, is to amend the heart, the interior, so that we will, unlike the Israelites of the Old Testament, truly be a witness. 
to the culture and the world because we keep the commandments, but also our hearts have been changed. And people know because when they come in contact with us, they see something that is attractive. Words of kindness, motives of purity, always trying to do for others, not taking revenge. All of that is from the interior heart. And that's truly what Jesus has come to give us and the Holy Spirit. Let us thank God that he's continually working in our soul and let us continue the work in Lent of transformation so that we can be a witness to God. Let us pray.